the technique began back like in 92, really, and it was really just as a, a discovery process. I was looking for like an emergent look in the artwork, like light coming out of the darkness. And I realized I couldn't get it in lighting, I couldn't get it in the dark room, and I realized I needed something, I think I needed something actually physically dark. So I was like, I thought, oh, what about those scratch drawings we did as a kid where like the colored papers underneath with the ink over it, and you scratch it out, I'm going, you know what, that should work with a photo. I called it an oil graph because I had no idea what else to call it. Because it's traditional photography in the dark room, they're really expensive pieces to produce. You know, just physically. The panels have to be made, the prints have to be printed. And I'd always wanted to do a Last Supper. You know, I've done a Stations of the Cross, I've done all these other things. And I was kind of waiting for the right time, the right people. And I was working with this group, uh, and they're developmentally disabled adults. And I, and I was like, I have to do it with them. And it's like the idea of this is my body broken for you and they're developmentally disabled. I thought this is awesome. So I told the director and she started crying. She's like, I will make this happen. Like many artists, I'm sure I started working off in my garage for the first seven years. Here's somebody pounding away at, you know, with a hammer or jigsawing and you can smell the oil paints in the air from somebody painting and you open your door and you can see interesting people carrying props and installations down the hallway. So there's always this energy that, and I know I've heard other people here say it before, where really when you're not creating, you, you feel anxious because there's so much being created around you that it really pushes you to to keep pushing forward yourself. When I photograph things, I build the whole set as a solid piece and then I photograph everybody in it separately. But when I do this, I always schedule the photo shoots to really be an all day thing. For me, it's less about modeling and more about acting. So when I bring everybody over, I, you know, I want them to get into the mood to evoke this character. You know, you start to get senile with the piece of artwork, which is exactly what I want. <laughs> it's righteously titled Pink Eye. And strangely, it gets the most compliments, I think, out of any of my pieces. It's the most simple, and um, my reflection's in it, so it's somewhat of a self-portrait. <laughs> and it stares at you no matter where you go into this place, so you're always being watched. Hi, my name is Yvonne Beatty, and I'm originally from Brooklyn. And I had a long career before I retired, and then that is when I went to art school. And this is a piece that I'm very proud of. It's called Zuri. It's made with uh, oil paint, acrylic, and gold leaf. The gold leaf is here in this strand of hair that you see coming down. And my idea was to capture a mood and a personality in the, in the model. And I certainly enjoy the use of a variety of colors. I like to look for variation in my subject matter these two prints are based on a single Japanese character, which I brush painted. I study uh, Japanese calligraphy, so I painted a single character and photographed it and then put it in a computer and used uh, the computer tools to come out with something that is completely different to show that you can get an endless variation starting with a single theme. I do a variety of different mediums. I think I'm more of a conceptual artist who lets the medium kind of dictate the way it's going to come out. I work in mixed media, painting, photography, poetry, dance. I do choreography as well. Alchemy is a piece about magic, that women have amazing power and the ability to create change in the world. It has a very deep collage inside with actually orchid seeds, petals. The metal pieces here are gold and copper and silver and brass. This series is called I Occupy Myself and it began as a performance piece where the model and dancer and the person drawing the sound waves was in one location and the, there were people in another location who would call out words and then they would get translated and drawn on her body. I ended up converting it into more of a series about women and objectification and finding personal freedom. With that, I ended up going into the Bill of Rights and patriotism and looking into the body politic. So I'm working on an entire installation 
now about women, the body politic, freedom, and those kinds of boundaries. So my name is Cynthia Manette, and I have been at the brewery for almost 17 years now. And the reason why I stay here and what I enjoy about it is that it affords me a large space where I can make my work. I can live here and come down and work on my stuff anytime. It also has fantastic dumpsters because my work is made out of recycled plastic containers for the most part. Since 2009, I've been working on a series called Unsustainable Creatures, where they are domesticated animals and the dumpsters have all kinds of great stuff that I can find and use in my pieces. So the project that I'm working on right now is an installation for the Anchorage Museum. It's part of a big group show of art and science called Gyre, the Plastic Ocean, and addresses marine debris. And I decided to make a site-specific piece that is five sled dogs pulling a sled, and they're all made out of recycled containers, plastic bottles, etc. I'm a resident here at the brewery. I've been here about 12 years. I've been in film production. I'm a production designer is mainly what I do. Every art walk I would try to come up with something new to make to entertain the guests that would come by. Having a pretty heavy special effects background, I decided to make some dolls and photograph them and sell these prints of them like family portraits. It was, I don't know, widely, wonderfully accepted, but it was definitely entertained by the people that came by. Kind of from that point on, my hobby became making dolls. And I started working and calling myself the doll maker and telling people that my name is Ryan Patterson, I make dolls. And um, came up with a name, I called it Let's Play Dead, because uh, the uh, styling of my dolls is a little less than, I guess, playing dead. I do love making these dolls. I get to make costumes, I get to make dolls, I get to do makeup, I get to do hair, and make a personality and, well, and kill it, which is a lot of fun. But I don't think they're dead. Like I said, they play dead. I, don't, I, I, I wouldn't surround myself with so much death. I think it's more trying to find what's good in them and, and what makes you smile about them. That's what's more important to me. Diablo is architecture in motion. We are interested in the relation and interaction between the human body and the architectural environment. How it is affecting us, not only socially, but physically and emotionally. We first come up with the architectural environment. The architectural environment is the most important. If I have to create a little salad, here is the recipe. I will put a little bit of everyday movement, a little bit of ballet, a little bit of modern dance, a little bit of gymnastic, a little bit of acrobacy, a little bit of martial arts, a little hip hop. And I would add architectural uh, environment, some more abstract than others. Then I tweak the whole thing. I toss it, hop, stay with me. And there you have it. This is Diavolo. I do surrealistic photography that mostly involves uh, large-scale set design. My partner Nikki and I have been working together for the last 13 years. She's been a set designer. The current series we're working on is called Evolution of the Revolution. And what it is, it's the African-American journey through history for freedom from the origins of the uh, Underground Railroad through the Civil Rights Movement and into the current political arena. This is the African woman and her struggle from being the uh, traditional household mammy to the assimilated modern-day businesswoman and how she She's still a queen through this whole process. This photograph uh, depicts the Underground Railroad as a modern day train station. This is a large scale uh, photography set that we built about that. And the idea of this is that there's a lot of symbols in here that talk about uh, things that were associated with freedom during uh, slavery times. The North Star was a symbol for freedom, so we incorporated that into the story. This is Amistad. This is the story of how, from the cotton field to the cocaine field, and how people get caught up in slavery, whether it be from the slave trade itself or from the modern the enslavement of, of, of the drug trade. We've got this great community here. I know that if I ever need a laser cutter or something like that, it's, there's probably about three or four of them on site. If I need welders or anything like that to help me with things. And so sometimes I need a computer programmer. And in some, in some cases, I might need somebody who is a, who's like an electronics wizard or something like that. The thing that I like doing best is sort of creating things out of found objects and figuring out how they can interact with one another. For me, like, a kind of mechanical, a mechanism is a story. 
And so there is something that is an inherently narrative about the way a machine functions. And then I did a, uh, I built a machine for the Colbert Report too, so that was kind of a neat, fun thing. And being able to do that in front of a live audience, setting this machine off in front of a live audience was really exciting. I moved in about six years ago, and uh, with Matt Gleason, I took his Art World Boot Camp and got to kind of get first row seat to what it's really like to be at the brewery and an artist, and then kind of coerced me into being down here. I've been here for six years. I love it. All my work has grown bigger and bigger and bigger. Being able to utilize the neighbors as a community is amazing. I've been a faux finishing painter, a mural artist, uh, started in Las Vegas in the casinos and worked my way into LA. And now I'm doing murals in LA and then doing murals that I can install for every event, parties, customize them. Andre Mirapolsky introduced me to the 3D Chroma Depth glasses with the black light work and I've taken off ever since then. It's really blown up. I've built out this space with a group of friends. It's been many things. Uh, we call it abundant sugar. My own personal work is large scale kinetic art and some solar sustainable art. So I signed the lease on this place. I didn't have a job. They called me, the office called me and asked if I was willing to take a larger space. I was thrilled at the idea and I had a bunch of Burning Man friends. We'd, we were building a giant theme camp and a bunch of art and I signed a lease with no job and just started going and collectively we built this amazing space out. Over the years I've done a lot of big Burning Man projects and then this space allowed me to expand that sort of hobby into a business and so now I'm, I'm able to do the same kind of large scale big festival work. This is a piece of what I believe to be an old drive-in sign. You know, it's old and battered. I love it. It's textured and it's old and worn. I like the road. I love the road. I think it, you know, I take Lily, my dog, my assistant, and hit the road. And whatever is out there, I want to see it. It looks, looking around the room, that it is a lot of outdoors you know it's a lot of landscape but rough landscape you know it's not beautiful uh, it's not beautiful in the beautiful sense and i love rustic and i love beat up and i like putting things together you know if you look at this it's water it's beautiful the water's beautiful as is the sign one of the things i like about living here is there's very little pretense you know it's a big place I get up in the morning and I take my dog out in my pajamas and I don't care, you know, I don't have to dress or, or be something. It is comfortable and great. This piece was made when I was on a sabbatical in Paris. I was there for a semester and I was artist in resident at uh, the French YMCA. And outside of the building, they had, it's, a, it's a 19th century building, and they were renovating. And there were stacks of these tiles from the mid 19th century, you know, like 1870s. And um, I just pulled a mess of them because I was working on an entire exhibition about finding things on the street, being the flaneur. So um, I did a, 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 an exhibition called Dream of the Dovecote Paris, so it was all about birds, pigeons. This piece in particular, I don't usually draw that consistently, and uh, it seems like birds are the thing that I'm finding more and more interesting. I can do them, and I love what they look like. This piece is called upside down songbirds from the death of the gladiator and it's made with uh, prismacolor and um, liquid iron and rust and gold leaf and it took me about three months to make this piece and I, I really like it a lot.